Welcome back to our series on the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook, which has been developed by the Cybersecurity Infrastructure and Security Agency. I am Justin Tolman, the Forensic Evangelist here at Xtero, and in this eight-part video series, which we are doing, we're breaking down the different phases of this playbook and giving you an overview and some of the details associated with each phase so that you can more easily become familiar with this and how to implement it in your agency. This is episode four, and we're going to cover containment. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, you can see the dates that they were posted. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel and you can go back and check the previous episodes. I recommend that you check those out and then jump back in here to take a look at containment. All right, let's jump into learning about the containment phase of the incident response playbook. So first off, we have our playbook here with only contain activity highlighted. And I understand that it's part of these other phases here, part of detection and analysis, but containment is maybe one of the most, if not the most important part of this whole thing. So while this section is small, it is not one to be ignored. So what is the objective of the containment phase of the playbook? Well, the objective is to obviously stop the spread of damage and to reduce the risk and the data loss that is happening or potentially going to happen within your network. So what you want to do is, of course, remove access. You want to expel any intruders from your network, those type of activities. However, there's two things that we're going to cover. We're going to cover the considerations when doing this, and then we'll cover some of the activities that you need to go through to accomplish this. So let's start with the considerations. First off, you want to make sure that you don't make your situation worse. You want to make sure that you're not destroying data or corrupting data or that in the process of trying to restrict access, trying to close down and preserve your data, that you, in fact, open things up or possibly damage the way that your agency can function. So it's a delicate balance here of being able to restrict the access of any intruder and, and expel them from your network, as well as maintaining what is necessary mission operations. Some things can obviously be taken down, but other things may not be able to be taken offline. Sometimes you have to take things down no matter what. One of the things that you need to consider when locking things out, shutting down resources, etc., is how long that's going to be down. You may need to communicate to different agencies, different organizations, if their missions are going to be impacted by the shutdown of certain processes. So just try to determine how long something will take when you come to this containment process. Also remember that part of the playbook for handling these incidents is the ability to forensically collect data and then analyze that. If your containment process prevents you from collecting forensic data, then maybe you need to reevaluate how you're containing. Now in an emergency, securing the data is your primary objective, of course. However, using tools such as FTK Enterprise, you can secure the resource or the endpoint while maintaining a secure and stable connection through FTK Enterprise, allowing you to forensically collect data. So just make sure that you are able to contain the spread or slow the spread while still being able to collect that forensic data. Because remember, we still need to learn what is happening. We need to get those TTPs. We need to be able to report to CISA what is happening so that other agencies can also adjust their IOCs and their defense measures to make sure that this same attack doesn't happen to them. If possible, you don't want to alert the adversary that you are either able to contain them or are trying to contain them or expel them from your network. The reason for this is twofold. We don't want to update them to our countermeasures so that they can't adapt and 
attack you in new vectors. But the second thing is we don't want them to move to other areas of our network and start attacking other things. If they hit a wall in one area or think they've hit a wall, we don't want them to now move and now we've got to try to find where they are going and what information they're after. So we want to try to contain them and expel them without them knowing what has happened till they're either already out and their access has been denied. All right, so what are we doing as far as containment activities? Of course, we're going to isolate the impacted systems or network segments. Solutions such as FTK Enterprise has the ability to do this to close ports except for those needed for forensic collection. So have some system in there like FTK Enterprise or FTK Central or something like that that is able to respond in the event of a breach by isolating that impacted system while still allowing for a forensic collection. One thing that you should also consider and be sure that you're aware of is the need to update your firewall filtering. Again, you wanna slow that spread. You don't want other gaps to start appearing within your network. You also wanna start changing admin passwords, keys and account secrets. Of course, if they're in your network, they found some gap, it could be a hardware or software gap, of course, but maybe they've broken a password, social engineered some information or things of that nature that allowed them to get in. By changing this information, you now remove that attack vector from the adversary. If you're in an advanced environment, of course, and you have sandboxes implemented within your network, try to divert them into that. That way you can study them in a safe environment. However, this is for advanced only. Of course, the priority, again, is to protect the data, protect the mission, preserve the integrity of your network and expel the adversary. So if you're already set up for this or have the skills and training necessary to do this sort of thing, absolutely, because it'll allow CISA and the other agencies to learn from this attack. However, remember the priority is secure the data. All right, so again, small section in the playbook, however, very important in the overall mission because again, we're trying to secure our network and protect the data. So containing and preventing the spread of any malicious actor is very, very important. So thanks for watching this week's episode on containment. We'll be back next week with the next episode, which is going to cover eradication and recovery. Be sure to subscribe for constant updates as we move through this series. And thanks for watching.